Welcome to Electron Online. In this video, we're going to tackle the next two members of this structure. We're going to try to find the force between D and F and the force between D and E. So those are the next two that we're trying to determine. In the previous video, we showed you how to find the force between C and E, which ended up being four kilonewtons. Now let's start with the force D to F. What we're going to do now is put our pivot point right here. We're going to calculate the moment about this point. We can say that the sum of all the moments about point E must add up to zero. The reason why we picked this point here is because the line of action of the force FDE goes right through that pivot point so we can ignore this one. Also this force will go right through it so we don't have to know this one although we do know what it is but at least it will eliminate it. Then all we have to do is then contend with this, this and this force. Two of them are known, one of them is unknown so we can solve for that third member there. FDF. All right, so this is equal to, starting with this force right here, this gives us a clockwise rotational motion or clockwise moment. That would be a, a negative 4.2 kilonewtons multiplied times the perpendicular distance from the line of action of force to the pivot point that would be a total of 10 meters. And this force here that gives us a counterclockwise moment, that is, that would be a plus 3 kilonewtons times the perpendicular distance, in this case that would be 5 meters. And finally we now have this force right here. Well that gives us a clockwise moment that's minus F dF. And we multiply times the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force to the pivot point that would be 6 meters. Okay, now all I have to do is move that to the other side of the equal sign. We get a positive F dF times 6 meters is equal to minus 4.2 times 10 that would be minus 42 kilonewton meters and 3 times 5 is 15 that would be plus 15 kilonewton meters divide both sides by 6 meters and minus 42 plus 15 that would be uh, 27 so we get F dF is equal to minus 27 kilonewtons divided by 6 meters. Oh, and that would be kilonewton meters. Meters cancel out. 6 goes in that 4.5 times. That's minus 4.5 kilonewtons. Notice that the force between D and F is a minus 4.5 kilonewtons. You may say, well, what does the minus indicate? Well, I drew the arrow in this direction, which means that I was assuming there's going to be tension of that member. Not that I really assumed that was the case, but we simply always draw the arrows away from the points at the end of the section. And so in this case, if we get a negative answer, that means the direction of the force is actually the opposite direction, which means that this is actually a compression situation. So member DF is really under compression. So this indicates the true direction of the force on this joint because of this member. That means this member is under compression and we know that the magnitude of the force is 4.5 kilonewtons. Now we only have one left. Now we need to find the force between D and E. Notice that is at an angle and uh, hmm, what we probably want to do here is put a pivot point probably here. That would be a good place to put it. So let's try to put the pivot point here. Why do we do, do it there? Well, it eliminates these two forces. It will give us this force right here, the force DF, which we now figured out what that was equal to. Uh, where do we go? Right here, FDF. And then the only one we don't know is FDE. So the sum of all the moments about point C is equal to. Let's start with this force right here. This will give us a clockwise moment, that means minus so, well, first of all, I set it all, the whole thing equal to zero. So minus 4.2 kilonewtons multiplied times a distance of 5 meters. And now we have the force FDE. Now, FDE is a known quantity. We know that this, oh, FDF, sorry. FDF, that's a known quantity. It gives us a, now we have to think about it. If I go with the purple arrow, then I know that the force of the action works this way, which I can go ahead and do, so I'm going to follow the purple arrow. I know that the force is in this direction. That gives me a counterclockwise torque, that's plus. 
the force FDF, which is 4.5 kilonewtons, 4.5 kilonewtons, times the distance of, now here's the line of action of the force, there's the pivot point, that's a distance of 6 meters. And finally, I have the last unknown. This force, the way it's drawn, will give us a clockwise moment. Clockwise means negative, minus FDE, times the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force to the pivot point. Hmm, that's a little bit more complicated. What I can do is say that this force will be acting at this point right there. If I draw a line straight up, I have an angle right here. Let's call it angle theta. I ne now need to find out what that angle theta is because what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply it times this distance, which is 5 meters, and then multiply it times the cosine of that angle theta, the cosine of theta. So I need to find out what that angle is equal to. I can do that by using the concept of the arc tangent. I know that theta is equal to the arc tangent of the opposite side divided by the adjacent side, which is equal to the arc tangent of, relative to this angle, the opposite side would be this side right there that would be half the distance from this joint to that joint. The opposite side, therefore, is two and a half meters divided by the adjacent side that would be this side right here that's six meters. So I need to find the arc tangent of 2.5 over 6. 2.5 divided by 6, take the arc tangent of that, and I get 22.62 degrees. Theta is equal to 22.62 degrees. I plug that number in here for the cosine of theta, and that gives me 0 is equal to, that's minus 21 kilonewton meters plus 27 kilonewton meters minus FDE multiply times 5 meters and multiply times the cosine of 22.62 degrees. If I combine these two, leave them on that side, move this to the other side, I end up with FDE multiplied times 5 meters Notice that now becomes positive because I moved to the other side of the equal sign. Multiply times the cosine of 22.62 degrees is equal to, adding these two together, I get 6 kilonewton meters. And finally, when I divide both sides by 5 meters and the cosine of 22.62 degrees, that will give me the force between D and E. Notice it looks like the force is going to be positive, which means I've drawn this in the correct direction. That means that member is under tension. 22.62 degrees, take the cosine of that, multiply times 5, take the inverse of that, that's correct, and then times 6. And I get 1.3 kilonewtons. The fact that it's positive means I've drawn this in the correct direction, which means that member is under tension. There we go. So now we have all three members. We had member FCE at 4 kilonewtons under tension. Then we had force FDF, which 4.5 kilonewtons is under compression. And finally, force FDE, 1.3 kilonewtons, and it's under tension. And that's how you can find the force on any member in any structure, simply with using the technique of sections. Cut the, member, cut the structure down at some point, expose the open members, find out where the next points are where the members would be connected, then calculate the forces from the end of the section that you have to the points where the members would be attached to if it was a complete structure. And then go ahead and follow this technique where you simply go to some of the moments. All you have to do is make sure you pick the right pivot points to eliminate those forces that you currently don't have yet in order to find the one unknown. And that's how that's done.